Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today I wanted to take a closer look at NVIDIA DLSS, which was revealed back on August 20th when NVIDIA announced the RTX series of graphics cards, which we have talked about at length up until now when it comes to rasterization performance and things like that, because we really don't have any ray tracing or DLS titles available to us right now. However, there were a couple of demos that NVIDIA has provided, the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, as well as the Unreal Engine 4 Infiltrator demo. So I wanted to take a closer look at those and just talk about some of the benefits of DLSS because I really see this as possibly the only reason to really consider the RTX cards since ray tracing is probably going to be extremely taxing, although DLSS on its own also might help save ray tracing performance later on down the road. But first, today's video is brought to you by Zero and Nine.com, where you could save money on PC games for all of your favorite platforms like Steam, Origin, Uplay, and more, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro or Microsoft Office Pro 2016. And if you use the code JOKERW at checkout, you can save 22% off your copy of Windows, which would bring the price down to $12.47, or you could use the code JOKER-S at checkout where you can save 10% on the entire website for anything you pick up over there. Please check out the link down in the description below. So for those of you that aren't as well informed on exactly what DLS is, I'll do my best to kind of explain it in simple enough terms so that you can kind of follow along with the rest of the video. At its core, DLSS is pretty much a new form of anti-aliasing, but to just call it anti-aliasing is really an oversimplification of exactly how the technology works. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, and it's called that because it is using deep learning with the tensor cores that are built into RTX cards. So you need to have an RTX card to actually use DLSS. Essentially what it does is it allows touring GPUs to use half the samples for rendering and use AI to fill in the rest of the information so that it can create the final image. In layman terms, what that means is if you have a 4K image, for example, it takes that and it cuts it in half, which would put it at 1440p. But then in order to get a image which is on par with a 4K image, it actually applies 64 times super sampling to that 1440p image, which if you were trying to run that on just CUDA cores and do a 64 times super sampling, it would be an extremely expensive implementation of, of anti-aliasing. And by expensive, I mean it would require a lot of horsepower to actually drive it. But since NVIDIA is actually offloading it to the tensor cores, it runs very, very well and actually gives you a significant performance increase versus something like temporal anti-aliasing. And when NVIDIA does that, it's actually even freeing up some of the shaders on the CUDA cores to be able to run other effects in the game since it's being offloaded to the tensor cores. Now, there's definitely two different trains of thought when it comes to thinking about this as a hardcore PC elitist. When I'm playing a game, I tend to really want to play games at their native resolution without really doing any sort of trickery. But DLSS and the way that it's working right now in the couple of demos that we have that I can show you right now on screen is that it is working really, really well and it's working to the point where it is even looking better than a 4K image when using temporal anti-aliasing even though it's rendering at 1440p. And while I'm probably won't ever end up wavering on that. I can definitely see the benefits for someone that is wanting to pick up a slightly more affordable GPU, but wanting to play at, at higher resolutions like 1440p and 4K, because when it comes to the actual performance, uh, it really makes the 2080, like the RTX 2080 can actually perform on par with a 2080 Ti. But that's when the 2080 Ti is, of course, using temporal anti-aliasing. And I do want to get into those performance metrics here very soon. But you'll be seeing some side-by-sides right now so that you can kind of see the difference in performance with the DLSS versus temporal anti-aliasing. And you will see that when it is using DLSS, we are getting a significant amount more frames, about 20 FPS more uh, realistically with the 2080 Ti or the 2080. So both of them are seeing a roughly 
20 FPS bump by using the deep learning super sampling. But again, remember that that is actually rendering the game at 1440p, but when you're playing it or when you're watching one of these demos in person, if you put this up into full screen, you should definitely be able to see it as well is that the visual difference is almost identical while just giving you a significant amount more frames in game. So that kind of brings us also over to ray tracing, which up until now we've really heard everything that we've everything that we've heard about it says that it's extremely taxing to run even on the $1200 2080 Ti and it is struggling to run it at just 1080p and 60 frames per second. But what about when it becomes available if those titles also have DLSS included in that and that could give you a little bit of a bump to possibly make it even usable at 1440p. I don't really have any hopes of running ray tracing at 4K in modern titles, uh, even with DLSS enabled so, but I do think 1440p might be possible in some games with the assistance of DLSS if you're okay with pretty much rendering games at half resolution, which for each person, they're really going to have to make that decision for themselves. Now, I mentioned performance there, and I did get some average FPS and 1% lows for the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, as well as the Infiltrator demo, so I do want to go ahead and go over those now. You can see on here for the Infiltrator demo that at 4K with DLS, that all of these are run at 4K. That's the only option we have for this demo right now. The only thing we can do is either run it with DLSS or without it. We can't adjust any other graphical options or anything like that, so... And that's the case with both of the demos for Final Fantasy 15 or for Infiltrator. So with DLSS on the 2080 Ti, we are seeing an average of 79 frames per second and a 1% low of 42, while with temporal anti-aliasing, we've got an average of 58 FPS and a 1% low of 31. So as I said, we're seeing about a 20 FPS bump there just by using DLSS, which is very good for the 2080 Ti, but what I actually think is more interesting is how that this makes the 2080 almost seem like it could be a decent value even though these cards are selling for $800 and as I've said previously the 1080 Ti's you can get those cheaper however with 1080 Ti you cannot leverage DLSS and in the case of the 2080 versus the 1080 Ti both using temporal anti-aliasing in the same demo the performance is almost identical within a couple of frames each other on the average FPS with the 2080 just slightly edging it out. However, the 2080 can use DLSS, and with that, it ends up averaging 65 frames per second, which is actually more than the 2080 Ti when using temporal anti-aliasing. So if you were looking for a reason why the 2080 may need to exist, I guess this is really kind of the silver lining at the end of the day for the RTX 2080, which seems unnecessary at $800, but in the instances of some really intensive games, um, I guess there could be a case made for why you might want to consider the RTX 2080, and that is really if you are going to want to leverage deep learning super sampling, which is going to be available in more and more titles. I believe they revealed 28 games when it was first announced, and since then there's been like nine other games that were revealed, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Arc. So this is actually being implemented with some backwards compatibility on older titles, so it's not going to be every single game that's ever going to come out is instantly going to run better with DLSS. At the end of the day, it still requires the developers to go ahead and implement it, but it does look like they are working through putting it into some older titles, and then also newer games coming out as well. We'll probably see this in more and more games as time goes on. When it came to Final Fantasy XV, again, you're going to see a very similar image here to the Infiltrator benchmark. Of course, the 2080 Ti with DLSS is going to run it the best, but again, the RTX 2080 with DLSS actually ran it better than the 2080 Ti with traditional temporal anti-aliasing. And that would again reaffirm what I was saying about why you might want to consider a 2080 when it costs more than a 1080 Ti. It's really going to matter whether or not you're going to use DLSS and it's going to be supported in the games that you want to use it. But I really feel that DLSS kind of makes the um, the best case for why you would consider getting an RTX card versus um, one of the previous Pascal cards because I don't think ray tracing um, is really going to be available in enough titles to justify it between you know this generation and then the next generation because I don't think we're going to be waiting um, more than like a year, year and a half for the next lineup of NVIDIA cards because they are moving towards 7 nanometer very fast. 
So I think it for I think for a lot of people, especially if you're already running a Pascal card, it would probably make sense to go ahead and stick with that. But you know, DLSS it definitely makes these cards look a lot more impressive. And I think that the DLSS in a way has kind of been overshadowed by uh, ray tracing as ray tracing is pretty much right on the box. It's called the RTX cards because they're really trying to drive home ray tracing. But I think DLSS is easily the best feature on these new cards. And I definitely want to see it implemented in more games in the future. And as soon as we have something available to test with actual gameplay, we will definitely dive into that as well. I'm hoping that Shadow of the Tomb Raider gets a patch in the coming weeks to add in DLSS and ray tracing, both features that are expected to be in that title. We just don't really have a timeline yet on when exactly those will be implemented. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on DLSS. If it's something you're planning, planning to be utilizing or if, you know, you were going to pick up an RTX card, is it something that you would use even though you're knowing now that it would be running effectively at half resolution? And it's something that you could definitely use at 1440p as well. But just like with 4K, it's going to be cut in half. So if you're playing a game at 1440p and you go ahead and throw on DLSS, the game is actually going to be running at 720p. And we were able to do that with the Star Wars ray tracing demo. It had, it had a 1440p option with ray tracing and it was running DLSS. And it actually did look a little bit blurry, but it wasn't too bad. But it's, it's kind of like a pre-rendered scene almost. In a, in a way, it looks more like a video than an actual game. So I want to see this stuff in action more in, in, re in a real world scenario, actually playing a game and everything before, uh, you know, we kind of pass final judgment on it. But I'm definitely hopeful for the future of this technology. And I definitely, as I said, I want to see it in more games so we can uh, really test it a lot, test it more and talk about it more in the future. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. I will see you in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to drop a thumbs up on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you tomorrow for another video. Sarah.